Good morning and happy Monday to you. Well, last week, last Thursday, we left off on Acts chapter 10. Uh, Peter had gone to Cornelius' house, Cornelius' house. Cornelius had sent men to Joppa to find Peter. And Peter's going to proclaim the gospel to this God-fearer, means that, meaning that he was interested in the Jewish law, at least in following the Jewish commands, it interested in Judaism, but he was not Jewish. He was not a Hebrew And he was certainly not Christian at this point, but God had prepared the way here. So we're starting at verse 24 today, Peter at Caesarea. On the next day, actually I'm starting halfway through verse 23. Um, Verse 23 says, so he invited them in and gave them lodging. And the next day, that's Peter inviting the men from, from, from Cornelius in. The next day, he got up and went away with them, and some of the brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So Peter, with some brethren, some other Christians, it would appear, from Joppa, accompanies him. Now, verse 24. On the following day, he entered Caesarea. Now, Cornelius was waiting for them, and had called together his relatives and close friends. So Cornelius doesn't only hear the gospel, but his relatives and close friends hears it too. So Peter preaches the sermon, pretty much his gospel, to a crowd here. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet and worshipped him. Cornelius is about to worship Peter. Listen to this, verse 26. But Peter raised him up and saying, Stand up, I too am just a man. Peter's not going to accept worship. And he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or to visit him. And yet God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy or unclean. So Peter's kind of laying the ground here, laying the foundation. He does not, should not uh, call any man unholy or unclean. Verse 29. That's why I came without even raising any objection when I was sent for. So I asked for what reason you have sent me. Verse 30. Cornelius said four days ago to this hour, I was praying in my house during the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in shining garments, and he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been remembered before God. It seems like an angel had visited Cornelius. He's praying. It's the ninth hour, which would be about 3 3 p.m. Verse 32. Therefore, send to Joppa. This is what the angel said. Therefore, send to Joppa and invite Simon, who is also called Peter, to come to you. He is staying at the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea, so I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. Now then, we are all here present before God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Now verse 34. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. That is a key text in the New Testament. God does not show partiality. Galatians 3.28 says, There is no longer Greek nor Jew, slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Revelation 7, 9 through 11 shows a great multitude of many tribes, tongues, nationalities worshiping God in heaven. By the way, in heaven, it seems like we do retain our, our um, I'm going to sneeze, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. We do ra- ra- ma- we do maintain in heaven our our race, our nationality. It seems like even in our even our own language in Revelation seven nine through eleven, it seems like this whole multitude is worshiping in their own language too. But that language, that that race, that nationality does not separate us. God does not show partiality, and neither should we. We need to rebuke any any racism in our life, and we need to confess that and repent of it immediately. Verse uh, 35. God does not show partiality, but in every nation the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. In every nation the man who fears God and does what is right is welcome to him. Now this is going to be key in the next chapter in Acts 11 as well as Acts 15 and the rest of the New Testament. Verse 36. The word which he sent to, he which is Jesus, sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You yourselves know the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee, after the baptism which John proclaimed. Verse 38. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I'm talking about Jesus now. Now, verse 39. We are witnesses of all the, of all the things he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. There's... There, there's more of the gospel right there. They put Jesus to death, hanging him on a cross. Verse 40. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible. Uh, not, 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 to all, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God. That is to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So Peter saying God raised Jesus up on the third day, granted for him to be visible. It, it even says here, granted that he become visible 
uh, not to all people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand. This is a little bit about God's predestination and God's foreknowledge, choosing the disciples beforehand. And the disciples, the apostles, Peter among them, uh, were ate with Jesus after the resurrection. Verse 42. And he ordered us to preach, he being Jesus. He ordered us to preach to the people who solemnly... He ordered us to preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this is the one, this is the one, Jesus is the one who has been appointed by God as, as judge of the living and the dead. Of him all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Through Jesus' name, everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness for their sins. There's the gospel. Verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. All the circumcised believers, that would be the Jewish believers, who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. The Jewish believers with Peter are amazed because these non-Jews received the Holy Spirit. Verse 46. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone who receives the Holy Spirit will speak in tongues. It means that in this instance, in this instance, they received the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues as evidence. It was an, a strong evidence, a visible evidence, an auditory evidence for the Jewish believers with Peter that they had received the Holy Spirit. Then Peter answered, Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked him to stay on for a few days. So here we have non-Jewish people, Gentile people, more than one, being baptized, receiving the Holy Spirit. We're continuing to see the book of Acts. Uh, uh, the, the Acts 1.8 come to fruition, where it says, You will see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. We're seeing that. Peter's going to the ends of the earth. He's taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. So we'll pick up on Acts 11 tomorrow. Have a good day in the Lord. God bless.